Our first reading on Passion Sunday comes from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Brethren, Christ being come, a high priest of the good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, neither by the blood of goats or of calves, but by his own blood entered once into the holies, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and of oxen and the ashes of a heifer being sprinkled sanctify such as are defiled to the cleansing of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the Holy Ghost offered himself without spot to God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And therefore, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of his death, for the redemption of those transgressions which were under the former testament, they that are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time, Jesus said to the multitudes of the Jews, Which of you shall convict me of sin? If I say the truth to you, why do you not believe me? He that is of God hears the words of God. Therefore, you hear them not, because you are not of God. The Jews therefore answered and said to him, Do not we say well that thou art a Samaritan, And hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you have dishonored me. But I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Amen, amen, I say to you, if any man keep my word, he shall not see death forever. The Jews therefore said, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If any man keep my word, he shall not taste death forever. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, who is dead, and the prophets who are dead? Whom dost thou make thyself? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father that glorifies me, of whom you say that he is your God. And you have not known him, but I know him. And if I shall say that I know him not, I shall be like to you a liar. But I do know him, and I do keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced that he might see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jews therefore said to him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham was made, I am. They then took up stones, therefore, to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. And they took up stones. Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. All things divine challenge the soul. Challenge the soul to seek the finality of our being, the goal of our life. And so it is that our Blessed Mother, in her prayer, received from Almighty God that testament that she would give birth to the one whom we seek. And that is the Christ, the Word made flesh. And so we turn to Our Lady and ask her to help us this day to go more deeply into the mystery of the Word of God. And let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Because you are in a farming community, 
these words may make sense to you. If I sow a seed, and a seed is a word, I reap a thought. If I sow a thought, I reap an act. If I sow an act, I will reap a habit. If I sow a habit, I will reap a character. That character will be determined by the actions from the very word that it was spoken from the very beginning. And if the word is of God, well, then I will reap a character that is of God. If the word is of Satan, I will reap a character that is of Satan. And hence, our Lord gives the principle. If you accept my words, then you accept God himself. The principle is clear. Word, union with God. And now, here we have the construct. That Christ is there, and he says, Which of you can convict me of sin? I who have been telling you the truth. I who have been giving you the example of what God would do. Healing the sick. Casting out demons. Giving light to the blind. Raising up the dead. And what do you want to do? You want to kill me. Why is it that goodness always is under persecution? Because in this world, original sin dominates. From the soil all the way up to each and every one, to the king himself. That this original sin is so powerful in us. This desire and somehow or other always makes us do the wrong thing, as St. Paul says in Romans. I will the good, but I do the wrong. Why is that? Why am I such a contradictory character? Well, Don Bosco had a dream. And in that dream, he saw all the boys playing out on the fields, having a good time kicking the ball, playing soccer, playing softball. And then all of a sudden, the boys stopped playing. And they all ran to a hole. And there was this hole, maybe about five feet wide. And the boys lined up and they started jumping over this hole. A new game or something. Don Bosco with Professor Valre said, let's go down and see what's in that hole. I've never seen it before in the playground. So Don Bosco comes down and he looks into the hole. And there are thousands of little viper snakes. He tries to tell the kids, get away, this is dangerous. They laugh, and they continue their game of jumping over. But not all of them can get all the way over, and as they get close, all of a sudden these little snakes bite at the heel, putting poison into the young man. Now the young man, you would say, should stop, right? Not these young men. They ran right back into line to keep on jumping. Sooner or later, they got so weak that they fell into the pit, covered with snakes. They were spit out, black, ugly messes. Don Bosco said, I couldn't stop them. I couldn't stop them. And I turned, I said, what can we do? And Valfrey said, look. And then the image of Our Lady Help of Christians was right there. Bring the boys to me. And she opened up her mantle. The kids that did obey Don Bosco began to grab their companions that were blackened in this soot and they brought them to Our Lady as an act and in and through coming to Our Lady they made their confession and were purified and they were restored. Then they kept away from that pit. But there were certain boys that dragged their friends into it and threw them into the pit. These were the devil's henchmen. And then all of a sudden, Don Bosco, when he got most of his boys away from that pit and under Our Lady's mantle, then that pit that was so filled with these serpents, it became one huge, unbelievable, 30-foot wide snake that was whipping itself all around. And Our Lady said, take this rope and go over that And they threw the rope over the back of this 30-foot wide snake. And they began saying, Hail Mary. And the snake 
began to have this rope just whipping up and down on him, and flesh began to tear apart, going everywhere. And the boys that were the henchmen of the devil began to eat that putrid flesh. It was ugly. And then all of a sudden, over in that corner where that hole was, out of the hole came the demonic Satan. And he, in his net, grabbed the henchmen that he had, those that are helping him, and he dragged them down. Damas goes, what does this all mean? And Our Lady said, the boys were seeking their little pleasure, and their pleasure caused the poison to come into them. Little disobedience, meanness, all of these little things. You start with little things, and that causes the poison of Satan to begin to move within the being. What conquers the word of confession? The humility of an individual coming to confession conquers Satan's deceits. And thus, these boys were restored through coming to our Blessed Mother. The rope is the Holy Rosary, as you know. Praying that rosary beats the back of Satan and breaks him apart. There are always going to be, Don Bosco said, you're always going to have to find out who are the one-tenth in the boys amongst the schools that are those who are the henchmen of the devil and seek instead to promote evil. There are people that promote evil. And so in this dream, we begin to realize the power of the word of God to conquer that which is of the world. But the world is, as we say, one of the three elements that can take us to hell. The flesh, our own flesh, the world, and the devil, finally. Now, our Lord is in movement here, talking to these Jews who say, Now, you are possessed by a demon... And you are a Samaritan. He answers, I have not a demon. Because he has not. He will only stand for the truth. But a Samaritan? Yes. He is the guardian. That's what Samaritan means. He comes to guard the eternal life and bring the eternal life of you and me and each and every one desired by Almighty God back to our origins and to protect us. So he says yes on that. But he says very clearly now, my Father is the one who gives me glory. And you know in your scripture that it takes two, two to testify for the truth. My Father testifies to me through the words and the work that I do. Therefore, I testify in union with him. And the two make the testimony true. How can you say that you are from God? Abraham we know, Isaac we know, Jacob we know, but who are you anyway? Then we have the discussion about eternity. That before Abraham came to be, I am. In other words, I made him. Every one of us is created by our Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of us knows that He has been before us and he is with us and he will be the goal of our life. And so in this Passion Sunday, we see that it is this testimony to the eternity of our Lord Jesus Christ that causes them to pick up stones to destroy the eternal. Now, there's something very interesting about these. Jesus uses the premise... If you love the word of God, then you are of God. The premise is, if you love the word of God. If you don't love the word of God, you are not of God. You are of Satan. His logic is perfect. What is the response to logic like that? Ad hominem attack. In logic, you say, instead, you can't attack the argument because it's true. So what do you do? You denigrate the person. And that's what's happening today. We don't have the opportunity to stand on a platform and say, look, the tradition of the church follows the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you are true with God, you will follow these words. Instead, what do we have? 
When I asked for the judgment on my own case, I wanted the true Mass, I wanted the true sacrifice sacraments, and to work with the kids in the St. John Bosco way. <sighs> Push off to the side. Oh, you're, you're, you're stubbornly disobedient. Using that, they wipe out any opposition to the truth. They no longer seek the truth in order to find out why is Father doing what he's doing? He's been always obedient and following this path and everyone has loved his work and everything else. Why is he now saying, I can no longer do that? Because it's contrary to the truth of this Holy Mass. It's contrary to the truth revealed by our Lord Jesus Christ. And hence, once you stand up for the truth, you enter into your passion. Today we enter into the passion of Jesus Christ because he has stood up for the truth that God the Father has sent him. He has sent him, as St. Paul says in Hebrews, not like bulls or goats or ashes of heifer that allowed the individual to go before the Holy of Holies, but he has sent his only begotten Son, the Lamb of God, to shed his blood because the shedding of his blood is the mystery of faith. Without the shedding of blood, no forgiveness of sin. The mystery of faith that God's own Son comes and sheds every drop of blood that our Blessed Mother gave to Him in that body in order that your soul and my soul may be cleansed and we might enter the Holy of Holies. This is what we call Holy Communion. And Holy Communion builds up in us the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is why I'm saying to those who are preparing for First Holy Communion, the next two weeks, spiritual communion every day. Every day, talk to our Lord. Ask questions of our Lord. Enter into a dialogue with Him. Don't just think you can just go ahead and just do it. The other thing I'm trying to present to them is this. There are two resolutions. First, Spiritual communion. The second is this. Bring a sacrifice to the Mass. I told you a couple weeks ago about, or maybe I didn't tell you, but I talked to their families and friends and so forth. I told them there are two aspects of the Divine Eucharist. One is catabolic. Did I ever talk to you about that? Catabolic means that we die to ourselves. Everything in this world uh, has to die to itself. I put a seed out there in the dirt. The seed has to die to itself to give a new life. Death is always a condition for a new life. That is called the catabolic aspect. So in your week, you die to yourself because somebody irritates you at work. But I'm going to be kind to that person. I'm dying to myself. That's a catabolic act. Now you come here to the holy sacrifice of Christ and what do we do? Anabolic. We lift up all the sacrifices that we have performed during the week. Now our week becomes generated around the action of lifting up to the Almighty God everything and everybody. And hence, now we see what our Blessed Mother did in giving Christ's birth takes the entire material and spiritual order, the angels and the material order, and unites it in the person of Jesus and hence offered to the Father. So that everything in one way or another is subordinated to the love and obedience of the Father. So I'm trying to teach them, use the weak and then bring these sacrifices, this catabolic action. Little kids like new words, big words, right? So, now we say, how many catabolic actions have you done? And now we're going to have the anabolic action of bringing Christ and lifting him up. And they get excited and say, it's a game of spiritual game that we have to play with ourselves. We have to generate exciting ways to bring about the sense of sacrifice like St. Louis Martin did with the little flower and so forth. So, for each one of us, we have this tendency in our, in our life to get down like the devil. The D's are part of the devil. The doldrums, depression, despair, 
Instead, we are lifting up, and that is the action of God. Never ever to keep falling down and saying, I'm down, that's it. No, he gets back up. Three times he gets back up. Why three? Because he fought the world, he fought the flesh, and he fought the devil. And we're all going to go through these three falls in order that we might recognize how to do that which will make us truly the saints that God wants us to be. And so, Lord, you have no hands but our hands to do your work today. You have no feet but our feet to lead others in your way. You have no tongue but our tongues to tell men and women how you lived and died. You have no help but our help to bring others to your side. May the word made flesh guide you now and throughout your life that we might have an eternal Easter together. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Son.